up in the config menu on the right hand side if you can see that uh, you can go in and you can change these options at any time we're going to start with the basics of virtual DJ right in the center here is your search panel you can click in there and you can search any song you want we'll go ahead and pull up journey we can search by artist or we can search by title of the song if you'll see in here we'll have all of our journey songs and uh, we're gonna go ahead and um, pull up stone and love now when we select it we can do one of two things we can double click and it'll automatically load it into an unused player or we can click and drag and it'll do the same thing if you click it up, drag it onto your record platter here, uh, that, that loads the song. Then you have your basic buttons just like you would a normal CD player. You have your play button, you have a pause button, you have a cue button. Cue button actually sets a cue point. So uh, if, there's, if you want to get rid of something at the beginning of the track, you can... Uh, you can set a Q button and it'll remember where that is. Like we could say it's here. I'm sorry. When you're playing, uh, it sends it back to the beginning. However, if we're paused and I hit Q, it's going to set a Q point. You'll see it set up there. Can you see that? It's in the small waveform and it's in the large waveform. And now, if we now if we hit Q, it goes back to that Q point. So we can do that, that's what the Q button does. Also, if you go up to it, you can right click and hit delete to remove your Q point. So we're playing our track. On our far left, we'll start with our far left. Up in our uh, far corner, we have this one button. You'll notice on the other side, it says two. This selects what player um, you're using for your waveform. What I mean by that, if one's selected, and if I go up, I can click on my waveform and slow it down, stop it, or I can set my cue points there. If I select two, I'm, I'm uh, using the other side. So I'm moving around my other side track. So that's just selecting what track you're using. That's really the only thing you have to worry about. You can still play, pause, uh, adjust your volume without those being selected. It's really selecting what you're doing in the waveform. So we're gonna go back to, to number one. Right underneath that is our pitch. Pitch and speed, just like you would have on a regular CD player. We can slow it down, we can speed it up. This will be used in, uh, in basic beat matching and mixing, which we'll cover a little bit later. If we keep going down, we have a key lock button. This is just like the key lock on some of our CD players. It allows you to adjust the tempo without changing the key of the song. You pretty much always want that key lock to be on. And when it's on, it's highlighted. It's not highlighted now, but if I click it, you see there's a little blue highlight around it. You also have these pitch buttons, and they're momentary pitch bends. So it speeds it up if you hold it, and then it slows it back down to its original tempo, or vice versa. What that's used for is to, if you're beat matching or mixing and you want to just try to speed up to catch up with your other track, that's used. But we don't really use them a whole lot other than that. We're going to go down, we're going to move up again to our loop and sampler. Uh, Virtual DJ has some cool built-in loops and you can activate those here just by clicking on your button. And if you hear in the background there's a siren, you have a volume control for it. plays a siren, click on it again, it'll stop it. If you click the little drop down arrow, it's got several loops that you can uh, select.
Now, it does an auto um, beat match to whatever song you're playing. Sometimes it works better than other. Um, you can also record your own loops, but we're not gonna we're not gonna hit that now. It also has some effects, um, a bunch of different effects, and you hit the button, and these are different parameters for your effects, and you can hear those. Again, that's more advanced. We're not going to cover a lot of that right now, but that's what it is, and that's why it's there. These are loop buttons, and um, these are to create a loop in a track. So if we want to create a loop in this track, and it just loops in at the places that you want it to loop. Um, and then you can hit loop out and it'll exit the loop again. These underneath here are auto loop buttons. Um, an auto one beat loop, auto two beat loop, auto four beat loop, auto eight and so forth. And loop out will get you out of that. That's what those are there for. Now, that it uses Virtual DJ's internal beat function. It works better on some songs than others. On this one, it's not finding the right beat, so it's not going to work as well. But if we say we'll pick up a techno track, um, we'll just search in our search function down below, remix, and I'll pull, um, here's the one two step remix. This has your solid downbeat. And the loop functions are going to work a little bit better on here. So let's we can make a four a four beat loop. And it'll do it automatically for us. And that's just going to loop indefinitely. You can go to the bathroom, you can do whatever you want, you can leave, let the show finish itself, and it'll loop forever. Um, we can bring it down to two beats, one beat. And that's how you get that uh, that function. And that's what the looper's for. Um, or you can create your own loops like we did before. In here it has a smart button. This is checked right now. This will make sure your loops are right on beat. If Virtual DJ finds the right beat. So on any techno tracks it's going to find the right beat. But it won't always do it. So sometimes that will screw you up. So I usually leave it off. But that's what that's there for. Um, we're going to go ahead and get out of that loop. On our hot cues, these are, you can make different cue points in your track and go back and reference those. For instance, let's say I want to get in a cue point right here. And I'm going to go ahead and set it right there. And then I want another cue point here. And it's going to set them for me. And I can go back just by hitting my Q1, and it'll just keep going back to that. Or I can go to Q2. That's what those are there for. And you'll see up here it puts them into the song, and we can go in and right click and delete anytime. Now, when you put in a Q point on Virtual DJ, it saves it to the hard drive, and it'll always have that Q point. That's a really cool feature, but you also have to remember that when it loads the song, it's automatically going to load it to Q.1. If you don't want it to do that, you need to delete that Q point. But it's also a really cool feature for songs that have a really long intro that you never want to play. You can go ahead and set the Q point and it'll always keep it if you're using that computer. So keep that in mind. Right next to that we have a sync button. And what this is going to do, it's going to auto um, set the BPM to the other player, whatever's loaded into the other player. That's going to be more mixing, and we'll get to that in a little bit. Over here, we have our mixer. We have um, a gain, which Virtual DJ Auto sets the gain it thinks should be right. But this is going to set the gain just like it would on one of our mixers. We have our volume. We have a PFL pre fader level. We also have EQs like we do on our mixer. Treble, our mid range, and our bass. 
right next to those are kills. What's a kill? Well, let's say we want to break down our track and get rid of the baseline, just kind of uh, to do something a little different. We'll back up in our track a little bit, and we can go ahead and kill our baseline. And it takes it out. We can do it with any of them. That's what those buttons are for to the uh, left and right of the EQs. Other than that, as far as basic functions, we have our search. We can search by uh, title, artist, whatever we want to search by. So say we search uh, um, Sean's favorite uh, band, Boys to Men, and uh, we'll have them down here. Also notice that it searches as you type, so you don't have to hit enter, which is also a really cool function. As you type, it's going to search. Now, once we have our voice to men loaded, we can sort by title alphabetically, artist alphabetically, or a really cool function is BPM. It'll put it in order of BPM, and if we're mixing, if we're beat matching, we're at 132 right now, we can find other tracks that are, that are a similar BPM. That's a really cool search function that Virtual DJ has. Over to our left-hand side, you'll see my computer, desktop. Um, these are, it's kind of like Windows Explorer um, or my computer and the fact that it's worth it's looking on your computer for things. Uh, Virtual DJ has a really cool auto mix function. Uh, this is, we don't suggest using this uh, for, for dance time, but it's really cool during uh, maybe cocktail hour where you just want it to auto play some smooth jazz and you have a playlist set up. We're gonna go ahead and drag our first track into our player over here. We're gonna hit start. We got our volume up on our mixer. We got two buttons right here next to our playlist function if you guys can see those. If we click this one, it starts our auto mix function. That round button is auto mix. I'm gonna unclick it. If you'll pay attention, up here, when we click that button, you'll see it loads the next song underneath this song. The auto mix stays on one player. It doesn't go back and forth left to right. It all does it from one player, which is really cool because you can have a song queued up over on your left player and, and be messing with that while, uh, while it's auto playing. Really cool function. So when this is activated, when it gets to the end of this song, and we'll go ahead and fast forward, by the way, up in this timeline, I can select different points of my song. But I'm gonna go ahead and get to the end of the track. And we'll watch this, and listen, once it gets to the end of this track, it's going to uh, do a mix into the next track it has loaded. Now once you've heard, it's virtual DJ, it's not gonna be the, the best, smoothest mix, but it's great for cocktail. But you wanna remember, don't use this function during dance time. You'll also notice that when it did that, it went ahead and loaded the next track from your waitlist. And this will keep going, it'll go all the way through your waitlist. Really cool function. Um, also you'll notice at the bottom of the waitlist, it tells you the total length of your waitlist. So let's say, um, you got, you've only got a few songs and you got a you know, 30 minute cocktail hour, well, it'll tell you how much music you have. So if you need to go out, talk to your bride and the groom, line them up outside for bar party introductions, you can let this play. It'll be all cool. It'll, it'll work. You also have a cross underneath your playlist button. This gives you different auto mix functions. You can also use this function to start and stop your playlist. If you click on it, it says start auto mix and stop auto mix, and same thing as that round button. You have auto mix type. All these are set to remove silence. 
that's going to be the smoothest mix that we've found um, for, for background music. Auto type, this is the seconds in which the crossfades. Four seconds seems to be the best route to go. We've messed with them, that's what I'm going to, um, that's what I'm going to send them at. If you click repeat, it'll just keep auto mixing the same song over and over again. So you probably don't need that. Um, clear is going to clear your playlist. Shuffle is a cool function. Um, shuffle actually varies the order in which uh, the auto mix is coming. So uh, let's say you have um, in your playlist, you've created a playlist and you went through and you loaded in a bunch of Steely Dan and then you loaded in a bunch of Larry Carlton and you don't want them necessarily to play in the order that that is, it'll randomize it. So that's a cool function. Remove played removes the songs that you've played from the playlist. So um, that's, a, that's a great function if um, you don't want to accidentally pull up that song again uh, in your playlist. It'll take it out for you. Remove duplicates will go through and say you've accidentally put two of um, uh, one, two step in the, in the playlist. It'll remove the duplicates for you. Save saves your playlist. So say you've got some playlists and you've got another smooth jazz song that you absolutely love. You can drop that into your playlist and you can save it and it'll save, uh, save the changes for you. So how do you create your own playlist? Well, if we want to create our own playlist, we're going to go ahead and um, stop this playlist. We're going to uncheck our auto function. And we're going to go ahead and, and search for our songs. I want to create a uh, rap playlist. So let's look for some uh, Little Wayne. Uh, spelling does count. I'm going to put some, uh, there's run this here. Well, if I drag this, click on it and drag, I can drag it into this box. And then here's Speaker by David Banner. I can drag that. Shody Say. I can drag that. And I can keep searching um, for, uh, for any songs that I want. Get low. So we have those songs over on our playlist. If we hit our cross button and then hit save, it'll give us what we want to save it as. And we're going to save this as training and hit OK. Now we have this that we can go back to whenever we'd like to. You'll notice that in our playlist function, training's over here. So if we load in smooth jazz, then we can load in training and it's ready to go. All your songs are here. Uh, this is a great way at a gig when, you have a, when you're doing a bunch of things and someone comes running up to you and says, can you play low? Yeah, I can play low. Well, five minutes later you might forget that. Um, so we can go ahead and put it in our playlist. We'll go ahead and put low over here. And that way you've got it there. You can get back to what you're doing and when it's time to play a request, you can look through and look at the requests that you've gotten. And now you have them low, and I can just drag it up here, and I'm ready to go. Great way to keep your playlist going. Um, only thing I'd ask is that if it is a playlist uh, folder after you're done with your show, go over here and right-click on it and delete it.